Good morning and welcome to Jehovah Jireh Bible Church. I'm the lead servant here, Pastor Andre Andrews. It's my pleasure uh, to invite you into this virtual sanctuary this morning. Uh, well, before we start our message of grow into uh, what God has to say today, uh, we're going to have a time of prayer. Because prayer is so, so essential for this life that we lead each day. Eternal Master, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you that we have the opportunity to lift your name up, O oh God. You said if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. Lord, I'm praying and standing in, in, in place as an intercessor today for those who are sick, for those who are shut in, those who, who need a touch from you. Matter of fact, Lord, many need a double touch from you, Lord, that they can press their way through the crowds and be healed, oh God. And so many of us, Lord, family and loved ones that are dealing with ailments and, 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 and disorders or whatever. But Lord, you are the God that heals us of all our diseases and the word declares to forget not your benefits by your stripes we are healed lord and we don't want to just be healed in our in our physical body but lord heal us in our soul heal us in our hearts oh god that we may be effectual loving christians oh god that we can live off the great commission that we can be ambassadors for you oh god we just ask this in jesus name and we pray and we lift your name up in jesus name we pray amen and thank god this morning, uh, I had just been uh, thinking and meditating on the word, and the Holy Spirit has really been uh, pricking at my heart about the things that I focus my mind on. I turned uh, 53 years young this uh, this past Thursday, March the 9th, and and you when you meet another number in the, in, in the birth record, you start to question and start to reminisce about past and, and, and present goals that you have for your life. And what the Holy Spirit had led me to was the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. That's Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4. Uh, and, 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 and the writer Paul is is telling us that we have to have a eternal focus, a kingdom focus, a heavenly focus. Instead of thinking about earthly accounts, we need to be thinking about heavenly accounts. And and, and before I go into the, the reading of, of the scripture, I have a mantra that I do before every preaching moment. Those who are at home and those who are in this virtual sanctuary right now, if you would, raise your Bibles above your heads and repeat after me. Living water, living water, fill us till we thirst no more. And our scripture reads, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, Set your minds on things above, not on things that are on earth. For you have been, for you have died, and you, you have, you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. May you been blessed by the hearing and the reading of the word of God. Eternal Father, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for this opportunity to handle your sacred oracles, O oh God, for without you, we can do nothing, O oh God. I am a weak mortal, Lord. I am frail in every way, Lord. In my weakness, I am made strong. It is not me who is strong. It is the one who lives within me. Greater is he 
that is in me than he that is in the world. So, Lord, hide me behind Calvary's rugged cross as you do the preaching, as you do the teaching, Lord, as you speak to minds, as you speak to hearts today, as you speak to me, because your word is a two-edged sword, Lord, as it's cutting on the outside, it's cutting me in the inside as well. Lord, let us be at conviction of your word today, Lord. Let us be on the straight and narrow, Lord, all because of the revelation of your living word, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For a subject title, set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. If it is possible to determine a person's true character by finding out what he or she really loves and what his goals are. Ask yourself these questions. What are the three things you most earnestly are working for right now? What are the three things you love the most? What are the things you think about the most. See, this is essentially the same method used by Jesus to determine a person's true character. For example, let's if, if, if you would, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verses 19, uh, 19 through 20. One, And it says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth rust and destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up, your, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. See, see, we, we, we concentrate on earthly things too much. We want the best job. We want the best cars. We want the best foods. We just want the best situation in this world. But as Jesus was saying, all these things rust, they, they, they decay, they fade away. But see, our eternal account, our eternal account, it's what means the most. See, the, the heart is the seat of the emotions, and it determines how and what we think. The heart. See, it's the seat where Jesus should be residing. See, see, it should be no other seat in your heart besides Jesus. He should be the central. He should be the centerpiece of how you operate in your life. He should be the first person you address about a matter, and he should be the last on job decisions. Well, even what you even what you should be. See, Jesus was so concentrated on heavenly accounts till he said, don't worry about what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Don't worry about tomorrow, for each day has enough trouble of its own. See, we have to change our focus and keep our focus in a vertical alignment. Not so much our horizontal alignment. Because if our vertical alignment is right, our horizontal alignment would be right too. Because that's the cross. If I'm in alignment with heaven, I can be in alignment with my fellow man. And I can be in the world, but not of it. Amen? I can be in it, but not of it. Because my vertical alignment is correct. In Proverbs 23 and verse 7, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, what, what, what we have to do, we have to have a change of thought and a change of heart. The heart and the, and the mind are synonymous with one. They work together. If you think about a thing so long, it becomes a part of your heart. The word declares that out of the mouth come the issues of the heart. See, if, 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 if our mouth is speaking on eternal accounts, and thinking about what's, what's, what's going on in heaven and what should I be doing and striving, trying to get to heaven. See, 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 my, my, my vertical panoramic view starts to change. 
I'm focused on the one I need to be focused on, not focused on what's going on in this world. If you will be honest with yourself, you're, you'll probably find that, that for, for the most part, our affections, our affections <coughs> are revealed in our thoughts. And if, if you're more, and, and, and as you think about your thoughts, it'll reveal to you that many of us have our thoughts too focused on the world and not focused enough on God. See, you're focused on what's going on around you, and you're not focused on what's going on in the heavenly places. Because, see, this is where we're seated in Christ Jesus. That's where your life is. It's in Christ, in God. See, it, it, it's a great demand on the Christian to stay focused on heaven. See, why is it so difficult for Christians to set their minds and affections on eternal things? This, this is to say uh, it, it, it's hard for God's people to be heavenly minded. See, it's difficult. Spirit and flesh still war with one another. And, and, and truth be told, in most cases these days, the flesh is dominating the spirit. It can be seen in our actions. You see so many carnal Christians. You see so many people that are adopting this lifestyle or adopting these views because of this, this, this particular group or this particular uh, 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 set, of, a set of ground rules for these particular people, instead of seeking first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, then all these things shall be added on to you. Your food, your, your daily necessities. See, see he, he, he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. See, my riches don't come from the earth realm. Because, see, when the day I was saved by Jesus Christ, I turned in my citizenship from the earth, and I received the citizenship of the kingdom. My identification now relies totally in, in the vertical alignment to try to see what's going on in heaven. Because that's the ultimate destination of where we want to go. Amen? See, some might answer, because our sin nature, this is why we behave the way we, we do. And certainly there is some truth in that. But Christians do, do have two sets of desires that are warring against one another. The desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit. See, Paul spoke of this conflict in, in Galatians 5, verses 16 through 17, as well as Romans 7, verses 21 through 23. See, but our difficulty in focusing on eternal values cannot be completely blamed on our sin nature. You can't completely blame your sin nature for the choices that, that, you, that you've taken. The fact that God has placed Christians in a, in, 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 in a difficult thought, uh, difficult thought not impossible situation. He asked Christians to be citizens of two worlds. See, I'm a citizen in, in heaven. I'm a kingdom citizen, but I live in this world. I reside in this world. So, but but the standards, the 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 uh, 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 the laws that go along with this worldly system do not apply in heaven. So you, 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 you have to follow the laws of the land as long as they're not contradictory to the word of God. See, because my citizenship is in heaven. I am now in Christ. I am not a citizenship of the world, but I'm asked to reside within this system and still have godly consciousness, still have godly citizenship, still walk as if I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm heaven on earth. That's what we're doing. We're heaven on earth. See, in fact, this is such a difficult predicament that it is marred a special prayer by Jesus 
on our behalf in John 17 verses 14 through 18. Let me let me turn to that quickly. That's John 17 verses 14 through 18. I can tell, I just recently got a new Bible. I love it because it has a lot of good teaching in it, but it's very small print, and it's hard to turn because it's so new. Uh, John 17, verses 14 through 18. 14 through 18. Uh, I have, I have given them your word, and the world hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. That they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. See, 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 our the Great Commission was just told to you. See, we, we're, we're ambassadors of Christ. See, and I, I don't think people get that in the context. Ambassador means the representative of that country. But we're the representatives of heaven in the earth realm. I'm a representative of him. So, so Jesus now being seated at the right hand of the Father, and we're also seated in the heavenly places in God, but we're operating inside the earth realm. We have to represent him while on earth. That's why it's dual citizenship. See, we're, we're kingdom citizens, but we live in the earth. See, and, 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 and as an ambassador, when you go to another country, you are still mandated under the laws of the country that you came from. See, we're not mandated by what goes on by the prince of the power of the air, what's he doing in his reign. See, we're, we're ordained to do what God has intended for us to do because we're representatives of the kingdom. Uh, Notice that twice in this passage, Jesus declares that his followers are not of this world. He says it in verse 14 and verse 16, that we are not of this world. But, 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 but twice, Jesus specifically says that God's plan is not to take Christians out of the world, but rather to send them into the world. See, see, the fact that he's sending us into the world, where, where he said greater things we will do in the earth for him. See, we have the we 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 have the 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 ability to use technology. We have all these things to to be used to work out the Great Commission. But see, in the process of us being sent into the world, we are supposed to let let heaven shine through us. We are supposed to be the light of the world, salt of the salt of the earth. See, when we do this, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Know your citizenship. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on heaven. How can Christians live in a world with its responsibilities and temptations without loving this world and being com being conformed to its values. See, the, the tension of this situation is addressed in the Bible. In, in, in Philemon, verses 3 through 20, it says, for, for, for our conversation, meaning our citizenship in 
and is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, no man that warreth entangles himself in the affairs of this life. They may, may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Keep your mind Keep your mind on Christ. Keep your mind on heaven. John, 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17. On the other hand, the Bible also speaks of some very definite responsibilities we have while on earth. See, our, our, our work our family, see, our work, our family, our, our health, our friends, money, etc. Show how Christian can be heavenly minded and yet give proper attention to the responsibilities of the earth. See, we're we're an anomaly. We're 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 like Peter said, we're we're a peculiar pre people, a royal people. Priesthood. See, we're we're strange to the world because we're 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 this this hybrid. We're 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 from heaven, but we operate in this system. I may look like you, but there's a light that shines within us that's different from the world. Mm. When we read the Bible or we listen to preaching and the Holy Spirit convicts our hearts to some sin in life. We determine that we're, we're going to fix that. And some would make a mental judgment to eliminate this or that for, for our life and we may even go as far as to replace it with something more godly. Meaning that somehow I can do some particular thing and, and reconstruct my life. But that's not how it works in the Christian life. See, the Holy Spirit was imputed in man. It was to lead him and to guide him into all truth. So I can reorganize my life. But if there's no transformation from the inside, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There has to be a renewing in your mind. There has to be a renewing in your heart. And that can only be placed by Jesus Christ himself, that it is his spirit that has been imputed in you. Man has not the ability to change himself. <clears throat> so we fail. So we fail by trying to, to somehow convert ourselves by determination and strong will. Our failure brings frustration, which often leads us to believe that since we, since we can't live the kind of godly life, that we want, there's really no use in trying. See, people get frustrated with the Christian walk because Paul found out when he had a thorn in his side and he asked the Lord three times to remove the thorn from his side and the Lord refused to, to remove the thorn because he said he would get puffed up or he would get full of pride. And then Paul later in the text says that in his weakness, he was made strong. Because I'm paraphrasing right now, the Lord basically told him in the conversation that I have to be broken of me in order for God to work effectively in you. In order for heaven to rain down in my life and for it to be carried out in the earth realm, I have to get my hands out the way. I have to decrease as he increases because he is the one that strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. My strength comes from Christ, in Christ alone. I'm not all sufficient. He is the only all sufficient one. See, my strength is in the Lord. This is what causes frustrations about walking out 
or being kingdom minded. But then we read the Bible or we listen to, to, to preaching that convicts our hearts and the whole thing starts all over again. See, it's, it, it's, it's the spirit that does the conviction. If you, you understand that, see, you, you can't work it out yourself. You got to have God working in you to change these things. See, you can, you, you, we have a godly desire. Jesus Christ has, by, by, by a single fact, for, forever changed our status before God. By his death, resurrection, he has transformed believers from enemies of God to children of God. See, these, these are positions now as citizens within heaven. And now our responsibility is to act in a way that is consistent with the new status. Now that I'm a citizen of this, of this land, I'm a citizen of heaven, my actions should play out the same way that they do in heaven. Hmm. In Colossians 3, here the apostle is urging us to exchange the old desires, attitudes, and actions that, that were uh, characteristics of our former lives for those that are, 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 are indicative of our new rank and standing. See, you so new. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. As I read the text in, in verse 3 of, 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 of Colossians 3, it says that I died in Christ. Now I'm alive in Christ again. So my old nature had to die with that. My old citizenship died. I have a new citizenship. I have a new life now in Christ. Paul says the path to true and lasting change begins with a change of desire. A change of desire. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added on to you. Seek out God first before you make any decisions on anything else. Change your thoughts. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change your actions. Walk out the Christian life. This concept of Jesus being seated at the right hand of God the Father is indicative of the Lord's power, authority, and position. Thus, Paul was no was was no not only asking us to love and meditate the things in heaven, but to also on the qualities and characteristics of the life that Jesus led while he was on earth. So we are supposed to follow up, walk out this Christian life. See, for many years as a babe in Christ, I never really understood when it says to work out your salvation. See, it means to walk out the process of sanctification in this life. Keeping your mind on heavenly accounts. Keeping your thoughts on, on, on keeping your mind on things above, not on things on earth. See, but walking in this earth with a heavenly mindset. Walking, but thinking about heaven. Walking and thinking about heaven. So you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't operate as the Christian without this. See, it, it, it was a reason why Jesus had to come to the earth. See, not only did he, did, was there a remission of sins, but he showed humanity how to walk out the Christian life once we were reconciled back to the kingdom of God. See, he was the template to show us how we should live. Jesus prayed often, almost constantly, to heaven. He left the 12, he left the crowds, he left the masses to go and pray to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, pray to heaven today. That's why on a Friday, on a hill called Golgotha, Jesus was nailed to a cross. He was lifted up high so he could draw humanity. He could draw us all 
unto him. See, it's a choice in choosing. You can have your thoughts, your mind on things above, or you can keep your mind placed on earth. See, God is sitting in heaven, and we are on earth. So he is higher than we are, and we are not. That's why he was pierced in his side and he died. Because without the remission of sin, remission of blood, the blood sacrifice, there would be no remission of sin. And we would still be enemies to God. We would be at enmity with heaven. We would be rebels to the kingdom. But now, you can have, pull out your kingdom citizenship card and say, I belong to heaven. See, 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 Jesus was so power, so much he was power itself. And in, in, in the states that they saw as weakness, he had controlled strength because he can bring 10,000 angels. He can bring legions of angels at any given time. But he was still under control. He was, he was placed in a borrowed tomb for three days and three nights. Death and hell thought they could hold him. They didn't have power enough to, keep, to hold the king of glory. Because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. The tomb was empty. And now he is the sovereign one, sitting at the right hand of the Father, giving intercessions on our behalf. And we are now placed in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I died on that day, but I rose again in him. So you got to say, thank God that I had a chance. See, I got to keep my mind on things above. Keep your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. I'm Pastor Andrews. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it.